focus on um, getting your data together and, and basically what we would consider a collection and preparation of your data for your habitat model. So everything that we that we do or we're going to do sort of starts with information. And you have to find an information source for the habitat that you're modeling um, so that you can justify the decisions you make in terms of what your inputs for your model will be. Um, so you're going to be provided documents about this species, and you should read them and, and to you kind of get some understanding of what we're looking for. And if you have questions and, and or don't understand some of the terminology like conifers versus hardwoods you know google it look it up try to increase your understanding about what we're talking about as much as you can and after you've done that just know that what we're going to do is we're going to break down what defines the habitat of the flying squirrels that we're looking for here in the two things land cover and elevation the various documents will go into this into a great deal of detail about the kind of trees that the squirrels live in, the kind of things that the squirrels eat, um, and where this uh, particular habitat or these tree types tend to occur. And the long and short of it is uh, they really like red spruce, but they also like some other stuff too. And pretty much everything that they like uh, is found in elevations above 909 meters. So that's kind of what you'll go with is some number there that you've got to decide on 909 seems to be the one that everyone goes with because it's right there in big bold font in one of those papers as far as the land covers what you'll find when you start looking at the data is land cover data is is classified out into different types of forests and different types of other things too but we're going to be focusing on the forest because this habitat is is forest habitat the squirrel lives in the forest but the um, the habitat the, the forest the land cover um, there's lots of different types there's cove hardwood forest there's hardwood forest there's um, mixed mesophytic forest there's uh, conifer forest there's hardwood conifer forest there's mountain conifer forest there's mountain hardwood forest there's mountain hardwood conifer forest and you have to ask yourself, what the heck does these things mean? Well, it turns out when you download the land cover data, after you unzip the folder, there is a text document in there that give you that gives you a detailed description of what tree species make up those forests. And so some people um, will look at the list of species that the squirrel likes tree-wise and they'll go through that habitat and select every habitat that has at least one of the species the squirrels like. Other people will say if they primarily like red spruce, I'm only going to pick the ones that have red spruce. Neither one are wrong, okay? But what you have to do is justify your decision why you picked one over the other. And I'm not going to call you out as to whether or not you made the right choice. That's more of a wildlife biology kind of a uh, a question and that's not this class so as long as you can justify the decision you made somehow you know, why did you pick this over that and not pick this over that uh, you'll be fine and so ultimately once we do that we're going to have these two data sets and we can do what we want you'll have to select a specific elevation you'll have to select the different land covers that you want to use and you have to be able to reference or explain why you chose those numbers and that is pretty much it. From to figure all this out, here's two links. One is a, a, a it's a Forest Service uh, document on the squirrel itself. It goes in a lot of detail talking about it. The the, the next one down is a little bit older document. Um, it uh, does a little bit better job of spelling out some of the species uh, habitat stuff but they're both really good papers to read and to, to help you understand um, this squirrel and what its habitat looks like so once you've read those and you've sort of decided what your magic elevation number and looked over the land covers and figured out which ones you want um, you're good to go but right now you don't have anything with the elevation and you don't have anything to look at to see what the land covers are 
So it's time to go find data. This is the part that's usually the hardest part for you when you come up with your own project. But today, it's going to be easy. We're going to go to the West Virginia GIS Tech Center, and there's the web address for it. The GIS Tech Center at WVU is an excellent depository of spatial data for West Virginia. And so there are any number of complex models you could create about any sort of natural resource related phenomena in the state just from data that they have there. Now they don't make this data necessarily, but they do keep it as a repository. Um, when new data sets are developed in the state or for the state, they oftentimes take these data sets and, and post them right there on their website um, so that you can access them easily and all from one place and it works out great. We're looking for an elevation data set and we're looking for a land cover data set. And underneath the tech center text there, you see there's two links. One is for the words DEM and one is the word for the words is a is a keyword search for gap. Um, but basically these two links will take you to those results of those searches. DEM stands for digital elevation model. That's a raster of elevation values and that's exactly what we need. The second one is gap. There was a, um, a land cover analysis project that started decades ago uh, that was referred to as a gap analysis and has to do with uh, just the way the environment uh, functions and stuff. Anyway, uh, they did a really nice data set on this that I like to use because it has uh, really good, clearly defined categories and detailed information about what, what is in those categories. It's an old data set. It's not perfect, but it'll work for what we want to do. So if we go to the Tech Center website at that address, it brings this up. Type gap in that search box. And right there at the top of the list, you get land cover West Virginia Gap created in 1992 and you got a download link. If you click on the download link, it gives you an option, UTM NAD27. This is a projected coordinate system, and you need to note what this is, because this data set actually has a slight little error with it, and we'll talk about that later. And instead of going back and trying to look up what this is, if you write down NAD27, you write down UTM NAD27, that'll be helpful later. So uh, if we click on that where it says UTM NAD27, we can download it. It comes down as a zip file. At this point in time, it's a good time to stop and talk for a second about file management. You should have created a folder for this project. And in that folder, you're going to create a folder. I like to call it data1. That's data with the number one after it, no underscores, no nothing. This is the folder where I download all my data into. And so... This land cover data set here that's going to be a zip file, I would stick it in that folder. Next center, we type in DEM in the search box. These are the results. The very top result is a digital elevation data set, the 30 meter NED. The NED is the National Elevation Data Set from the United States Geological Survey. This particular version that they're hosted here was created in 1999, and we're going to click on it and go to the download link. And it gives us a couple of options these three. The one we want is the grid format and we want it in UTM NAD83. Again, grid format NAD8, UTM NAD83, not the GCS. Again, it's going to open up an opportunity for us to download a zip file. We're going to stick the zip file in our data one folder or whatever you, you called yours. Uh, same place you put the land cover data set and save it. Now, here's the thing. Unlike um, a lot of stuff, uh, Arc does not work like Windows. And so in Windows, you can open up and look inside zip files, and that's all wonderful. If a file is zipped, you cannot use it in a GIS. You cannot use Windows to grab things out of a zip file and stick them somewhere else. That tends to cause you to miss certain things uh, that the GIS needs. So what you have to do is extract those files. So at this point in time, I would say go back to your folder where you, um, uh, in your project folder, you have this nice data one folder you made. Make a new folder called data two. 
at that at this point in time open up your data one folder unzip all those zip files and tell it to store that stuff that it unzips in data two and that's where we're going to work from so we've reached a point now where we need to see what we actually have so you're going to open up your arc map software and uh, as soon as it opens up i want you to set the data frame properties to utm um, nat 83 zone 17 north uh, if you haven't already go to your downloads extract them um, ArcMap can't work in zip files, so you have to extract it before you can use it. We'll then load this stuff up in our maps, and we can start looking at the projections and all that. Now, we've already decided, because we set our data frame to NAT83 UTM Zone 17 North, that that's the projection we're going to use. Obviously, one of our data sets is in NAT83 UTM Zone 17 North, and one is in NAT83 UTM uh, one's in NAD 27 UTM Zone 17 North, but the NAD 27 one doesn't display. You'll get an error message when you load it up that says this data can be displayed, but it can't be projected or something to that effect. That means that it's missing spatial information, and so we'll have to fix that. And we'll talk about the tools and orders and how we have to do that coming up. So back where we started, we're at the, the land cover data set there. We went in, we clicked on the UTM link to download it there. We did the search for the elevation, we, which brought up this page. We selected that. It gave us the zip folder. We went to arc map. We hit cancel because we don't want a specific map. We want just a big old general map like this that's empty in the table of contents on the left where that green arrow is pointing now it's actually useful uh, we're going to right click on that and uh, go to the properties and we're going to set the coordinate system and so when the data frame properties open up we go to the coordinate systems tab we're going to scroll down to the projected coordinate system box and then we're going to go down to the UTM folder open up the UTM folder select the NAT83 folder and in the NAT83 folder we're going to find the NAT83 UTM zone 17 north and we're going to click apply and click OK. Once we do that um, we can go back and, and look at extracting the other data sets as well um, but we can start loading stuff into ArcMap using the add data button We'll add it in that West Virginia Gap data set. Notice that text file there. Uh, if you go into Windows Explorer and go into the folder where you extracted this data set, that's where you'll find the text document that explains what each class in this land use classification means. But for now, we're just going to load in the West Virginia 1994 Gap file. Now, if you can't find it, it's because you don't have a connection to that folder. Um, from your add data button, there's a little folder on the right there with a black plus symbol. If you click on that, it opens up a Windows sort of looking tree there where you can go through and find that folder. Once you find it, simply click to add that folder. And you're not looking for this West Virginia Gap folder. You're looking for your Data 2 folder, the one where you extracted all the stuff to. That way, that same folder will have everything that you need in, in it for the project. So let's go to connect to folder. Again, I put mine in my data two. That's where my land cover, that's where my gap stuff is at. I simply select the data two and click OK. Once I load the data, the one there on the left, the West Virginia 94 gap, into the document, I get that message about the unknown spatial reference. Um, if we were to go back and look on the data set, uh, you can see the circle is a little bit off, but once we load it in, remember when I told you to write down UTM NAD 27? That's what this coordinate system is supposed to be. And if you were to scroll on down that initial page uh, back at the tech center, there's a whole section down there on the coordinate system that tells you it's in UTM Zone 17 North NAD 27. Right there. So if we uh, now go back and... Uh, Look at that data set in our ArcMap document. We have to fix it. It 
won't display properly because it's missing part of the spatial reference. And so we're going to use the, uh, the uh, define projection tool to fix it. Define projection we use whenever we have a coordinate system that is missing or incorrectly labeled. So we'll actually just fix this one uh, by labeling it what it is. Now this isn't how you change it or make it into something else. This is what you use to correct a mistake or an error of omission in terms of a coordinate system. So we select the data set and then under coordinate system it should say unknown until where that green circle is you click on that little tool that'll open up um, what I'm going to show you next which will allow you to then select the one you want. Um, once you've done that uh, and select the, the correct one, the U, so it would be just like we were looking at earlier where you go to uh, UTM NAD 27 and then find zone 17 north and that will be uh, what you would do for that and simply put it just changes the label and so everything works. Now that that's done everything will display properly but it's still not projected the same way and so we want everything to project the same way so we're going to do this in a previous iteration of this I read this like I was Yoda it's kind of lame I'm not going to do it again sorry so next up let's see what we got the tools we're going to use project raster after we've defined the projection in the NAD 27 we can now change it to match the UTM NAD 83 zone 17 north of our other data set and of our map document and we do this with project raster uh, it's again in projections and transformations it's not too hard to find um, simply select the input raster and then we'll select the output data set what it's supposed to be pick our coordinate system and work through all those bells and whistles so as far as what coordinate system we want uh, under layers because we have one of each we should be able to simply select the one we want which is the NAD 83 UTM zone 17 north which is how our elevation data is currently projected we can simply select that after the tool runs it's going to in the table of contents give you a brand new data set that will now be projected correctly now anytime you make a file like this it gives you an option of the output location and where it's going to go you should always select a folder where you know where it is going to be uh, which should probably be your data to folder um, when you do the data to folder you also get an opportunity to give it a name and if you don't do that it sticks it in some random folder that you don't know where it's at and it gives it a really weird name like you see up here where it says West Virginia 94 underscore gap underscore project raster one horrible file name horrible data set and so it's now in uh, UTM NAD 83 your elevation is in UTM NAD 83 they're all in a folder they're all neatly together and you've got all the data that you need this basically gets you ready for that next step which is sort of um, making something useful out of your data